Welcome to Designer Discussions with Jason, Maria, and Miriam. Today, our guest is Shannon Poles. She's a marketing strategist, and she's here to talk with us about the different ways interior designers can collaborate with brands. Welcome to the Designer Discussions podcast. Tune in each week where we discuss marketing, branding, PR, and business advice for design professionals. Our guest today is Shannon Pulse. She's a brand marketing strategist with experience in a vast um, number of industries. We actually work together um, professionally right now, and she's here in her capacity as the uh, marketing boss of PPG, um, which part of that company is Speakman, which is a shower is famous for its shower heads and faucets. And we want to talk about brand partnerships and how interior designers can leverage um, and easily create brand partnerships. Great. Thanks for having me here today. Welcome, Shannon. Um, I'm very excited to talk to you about this because I feel like it's a topic that is widely misunderstood. And um, I know that you um, at PPG and with Speakman, you actually, you you pretty much cover all the different um, options, how brands can partner with interior designers and influencers. And I I want us to go through Mm -hmm. it a little bit to sort of dissect for people what the different options are. But first, tell us just a little bit um, about yourself. Yeah, sure. No problem, Miriam. Thank you. Um, My role here at PPG, as you kind of mentioned, I'm not sure I would call myself the boss per se, but basically I am marketing services manager. I do oversee our two proprietary brands known as Speakman and Wolverine Brass. I handle everything that would have to do with amplifying our brand reach, whether that's through advertising, promotions, PR, or social media. There's and a lot to as do. You've already, yeah, there's a lot to do. As you mentioned, there are two brands. You know, one is basically for the trade professional. Uh, we supply rough and plumbing products for under the Wolverine Brass brand just for trade pros. Uh, so anyone that might be in the construction business, residential plumber, et cetera, would be familiar with our Wolverine brass brands. And then, of course, Speakman, um, our commercial grade fixtures known across the hospitality industry. Um, and we have shower heads, like you've mentioned, faucets, vitreous china, everything to elevate the bathroom experience from initially that hospitality perspective. But now mm-hmm. we're going after homeowners alike. So that's really where our brand partnerships come to life. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a very exciting journey for sure. I'm um, like, so mm-hmm. let's dive a little bit into. Um, I'd like to talk about basically three different types of brand partnerships. There's the paid um, influencer partnerships, and I think that's usually what everybody spontaneously goes to when you talk about brand partnerships. But that's just one um, aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's the the licensing partnerships and Speakman actually has a couple of those also with more high profile mm-hmm. um, designers. And then the third kind um, is really where I want to um, spend the bulk of the time um, chatting. And it's, I call them grassroots partnerships and where brands and designers sort of organically align and, and, and collaborate. So if you, um, just from your experience and, and, and how you handle it at Speakman, if you want to say a few words about each of those um, different sure. types of brand partnerships, and then we spend some more time talking about how you can create those grassroots relationships. Absolutely. Um, so our paid influencers uh, are often referenced as bloggers. You know, these individuals really at the core understand search engine optimization, search engine marketing, they understand SEO ranking. There's a lot of work done. Um, These are really content creators at the core, regardless of their industry professions and what have you, or their key focus areas, whether it could be 
beauty and wellness or, you know, DIY or design, like we're talking about here today, you know, but they actually build their content for very specific purposes. These individuals can have um, managers, they're often found within all social media channels as well. They take just a lot of care in the way that they create their content. They may also have rate cards, uh, which are available kind of readily when re upon request. Yeah, it's like what, what people like to call a media kit, right? Where they tell you how yeah. much their services cost. Right, but their content so organically appears in searches when you're looking for, you know, any said design topic or best shower head, you know, you can really dive in and start searching for content and it very organically kind of comes to the top of, of those search engine results. And so, you know, the one thing to think about here is these paid relationships definitely have a place within the marketing uh, media mix, but you know, they're not the only way that, you know, someone can have a relationship with brands and what have you. They, like I said, they do have a place. They understand their engagement rate. They understand the click to buy, the, you know, the swipe to buy and everything in between. They can really um, even begin to make a whole revenue stream all on their own. Uh, when it comes to affiliate marketing and understanding where brands live uh, on the digital shelves. So they're very savvy and uh, well-respected usually as well within, you know, uh, their specific areas that they work in. So then our licensed partnerships, uh, these are really high profile uh, designers. Um, we're very fortunate here at Speakman to have worked with um, two world-renowned designers, um, one of those being Roger Thomas of the Wynn Hotels. And uh, he basically creates, you know, the beautiful interiors found within Wynn Hotels. He's now re uh, retired or semi-retired at this point, but just creating those beautiful, luxurious environments. Um, and then we also have partnered with Quota. She is known for her work with Miraval Resorts and Spas. Um, basically, she kind of marries together design and nature and is known as one of the designers that has basically brought um, green and sustainability design, you know, to the forefront, one of the early designers uh, doing so. And so when I think about license partnerships, basically, this is kind of co-branding. Mm -hmm. um, you're bringing together that designer's brand and experience to life with um, product. And so that's usually brought uh, to life with the opportunity to work with large construction projects such as hotel design or what have you. And I like to think of it as, you know, when you walk into a luxury hotel, what's that first thing that you feel? They create that from the ground up. And so that when you transcend from one space to the next, I'm sure that you guys all probably have hotels that come to mind, right, from vacation. And just it takes you that escape and that immediate connection to something else or going into a different uh, space. That's what they work so hard for, which requires them to create their textiles, their um, wallpapering, fixtures, and everything really from scratch to be able to um, achieve that end result, that vision that they have for that design. So that's how our license partnerships come into play. They're mutually beneficial, both the manufacturer or the brand represented as well as that designer um, openly promote the products. And the beauty of it is those products usually go from high-end luxury hotel to being available to homeowners alike. So we do love those licensed um, partnerships and relationships with our world-renowned designers as well. It's something then, that can uh, really work well, but just to, I know that having licensing deals is, is a goal of many interior designers. 
And mm -hmm. if we can yeah. put it in perspective, and I mean, obviously, these are two very big names that um, Speakman has partnered with, but that's usually what the brand is after, right? You, you, it, it needs to be an interior designer who's well established, who has lots of credibility, who's usually gotten um, fair amounts of PR in the past, you know, mm -hmm. and that's helped establish their status within the, the, the industry. Um, so it really getting a licensing deal with a brand um, is sort of at the tippy top um, of the mm -hmm. of the PR marketing scale for an interior designer. So there's a lot of things that um, need to be established before you you honestly can approach a brand with with a, a licensing proposal. You're absolutely right. And it does. It takes years of experience and often well-recognized awards. You mentioned PR. PR is such an important part. There's there's one thing a designer must do for themselves is they have to they have to build their name and their brand, you know, and that comes with a core focus on PR as well, which is a whole separate effort in and of itself. Very true. Um, so now what about the area in between, you know, for interior designers who are not um, influencers, strictly speaking, you know, who may, may have a presence on social media, larger or smaller, but who do beautiful work and are interested in collaborating with a brand. It's like, how, how do you handle that um, in your business? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. We love our grassroots partnerships. Really, it's where our brand kind of hits our sweet spot, so to speak. Um, these individuals help us with that content creation portion of things. Um, we're fairly uh, generous with, you know, our, our partnerships and what have you. Um, really, we partner with everything from nonprofit organizations, working with designers who are just getting their start. Um, to rehab, you know, homes and things that may be used um, for a number of different things. And, you know, they request products in order to help make the project come to life. Mm -hmm. And that's really at the core where it starts. You have a need as a designer. You don't have the budget, but you have the project, right? And whether that is your work coming to life, um, you know, for free, small, you know, monetary compensation, or even, you know, at the highest of levels, but you're looking for how do I make all of this happen within, you know, a budget available to you. And let's be honest, kitchens and bathrooms, which Speakman is known for, those are high dollar value renovations. So really all it takes is, you know, outreach to the brand. Um, we love to see uh, basically all of your design inspiration and putting that in front of us and putting your plans in front of us. It could be a sketch. It could be CAD drawing or anything in between. It could be flat lays of textiles and fixtures. You know, there are a lot of digital tools out there um, to help designers do those types of flat lays and borrow um, materials, textiles, and wallpapers and everything from a digital perspective to really be able to put it in front of a brand and say, I would really like to help, you know, bring your product to life in my upcoming project. Would you be willing to partner? I mean, I think the biggest failure when it mm -hmm. comes to grassroots partnerships is not asking from the start. What's the worst thing you're going to be told? No. Yeah. And I know failure that is part of the process <laughs> from all the conversations we've been having, and maybe Maria can comment on this too, but there are a lot of designers who feel very insecure about doing that because they don't feel like it would be of interest. And I always tell them, it is the opposite. It's like all brands, especially the smaller mid-sized brands, they love to hear from interior designers, you know, and 
content creation is such a challenge from a budgeting standpoint, like for you to build out bathroom and kitchen sets costs a fortune, right? So if you can have your product placed in a beautiful project that's designed by a designer who, who creates great work, it's a complete win-win for both parties. Absolutely. I agree. And I, I'm not sure if Maria has anything she would like to add there, but it, it's definitely, I can understand both sides of the fence, right? That um, insecurity, because you're afraid of the no. Mm-hmm. But I think it's practicing that that outreach. And just as if you were going on a job interview or what have you, you practice that pitch, you um, finesse, you know, those details that you want people to know about you or your project, and you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. So what I was going to say as an interior designer, it's also expensive for interior designers to redo their homes so that their spaces look totally up to date and according to trend so that they can be photographed in their space so that they can provide their social media content. And when you think about putting a product in someone's personal space, they're using it all the time. Plus, if they're having to show up on social media all the time in that space, you're getting all of this repeat Mm -hmm. repetition and, you know, content that just keeps going for the lifetime of the product in the space. And Mm -hmm. by the way, the media love to feature space homes of designers. So there's really good opportunity for PR there. And that's another thing, like if, if a designer and a brand partner, if either one of those parties proactively do PR, chances are that it's really, I mean, if the project gets published, it's a huge win for both the designer and the brand, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's extremely beneficial to everyone. I agree. And I always encourage designers to just, you know, and don't go seeking out, you know, the biggest brands or the highest ends, like look at the look at the products that you're already using um, when you're designing, right? And there's probably brands in there that um, would love to partner with you. And one of the things that I always recommend, and I know Shannon, that you'll love this too, is like, if you have a project and you're using a product, tag the brand um, whose yeah. product you're using, without having any kind of direct connection because the brand is watching, right? Don't you love it when a designer tags Speakman in a post, yes, even if absolutely. there's not a call out to the product, but just the tag and you're like, oh my God, look at our product. That's so awesome. Absolutely. And, you know, I think you, you raise a, a really good point. You know, there are ways, like, as I mentioned, within that digital realm to do flat ways to put some design inspiration together without ever spending a penny. And, you know, that could be that very first post that actually engages the brand because we do reach out periodically and say, Hey, we love your content. Would you consider partnering with us to bring this to life? Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's the beauty of social media and the scroll, right? Is that, Mm -hmm. Once a brand is tagged, you have the ability to then see that content creator's other work. And so the social channels, blogs, and things of that nature are all very important as part of, you know, your overall portfolio. It doesn't have to fit within, you know, the digital traditional layout of a designer portfolio. It encompasses that entire mix. So drawing, sketches, you know, digital elements, social channels, Instagram, um, you name it. There are brands out there in every industry looking to work with those designers of beautiful content across the entire marketing mix, um, especially from that digital perspective. Yes, I know this to be true of all the brands I've ever worked with um, over my entire (laughs) career, pretty much. Um, then an, a challenge that um, designers usually have is like, if it's, I don't, I don't know how to go about it. You know, it's like, where do I start? And I think social media 
is one of the ways that you can get in touch. You don't always know who manages that account. It may be outsourced, you know, I may be somebody very junior who's working on that, who may not have the right connections. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend the other um, way to do it is you find, I always say the PR contact, you know, because they're usually the ones mm -hmm. who liaise um, between designers yeah. and the brand, or you, if there's, it's sometimes hard to find contacts on the website. Um, but if you sure. find a PR contact, I'd say start there because they're, they're for sure going to connect you with the right person within the company. Right. Absolutely. And again, like, you know, for every three or four attempts to connect, you may get one, mm -hmm. but you know, one solid connection goes a long way. I do suggest, you know, utilizing social media, inboxing, um, asking that your information be passed along. Mm -hmm. um, in some instances, customer service at a specific company can put you in touch with the right person because their job is to solution solve. Um, and so that's just another avenue that you can go as well. But I would strongly suggest looking for that PR contact first because they're all about networking and making sure the brands are well connected and well represented across the entire marketing mix. So um, the other avenue is, you know, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, may or may not be something utilized by designers. Um, I know a lot of creatives have kind of overlooked that space as an opportunity, you know, in years gone by and what have you in the past. Um, but I think even a minimal presence within LinkedIn can always go a long way. Agreed. I think that's a really helpful tip. And LinkedIn is, I know there are some designers on LinkedIn, but probably not as many and as active um, as they could be. So that's an excellent tip. Yeah, because a lot of people have in, you know, you can inbox people there, or at least find the name. Yeah. And then you, you go to the search, right? Take the name, go to the search and, and find them online. So makes it a little bit easier. And, you know, I personally being, you know, kind of in, in charge of the specific area for um, the professional plumbing group, Speakman, Wolverine Brass, et cetera, I really, you know, never frown upon any type of outreach and ability to connect with someone new mm -hmm. because you never know when the opportunity will present itself to have that mutually beneficial relationship. Well, Shannon, thank you so much. I think this is really good information and information that's not often shared within this industry. Yeah. And I think it's not just applicable to, to your company, but it really applies across the board. And I, I, I wish that more designers um, would take advantage of all these wide open opportunities that are out there with all these brands that are really just waiting to hear from them. Um, and hopefully if they listen to this, it'll encourage them um, to take, to take some action. What would be the earliest a designer could reach out to a brand and ask them to have an opportunity to work with them? Do, what would they need to have in their repertoire, in their resume for them to have some credibility? Quite honestly, there are a few unique opportunities a designer could take advantage of. The first one that really comes to mind is the one room challenge. It gives, uh, you know, a designer the opportunity to start at the very basic of levels. These individuals may not have any experience. Mm -hmm. They might just be getting their start and maybe a passion might be coming from that DIY perspective they know that they've enjoyed this realm and space for some time, maybe have dabbled in it for, you know, one reason or another. But honestly, from Speakman's perspective, there, it, it's never too soon in your career to really make that connection. If you're looking to participate in something substantial, like the One Room Challenge, like the Jeffrey Court Challenge, there are design challenges out there that are going to help you as a designer get exposure to um, brands like ourselves who like to partner 
with um, designers and uh, bring our products to life for that content creation. You know, it really helps us in our journey as a brand. Um, when I think about Speakman, we were known as a hospitality and really commercially focused brand uh, that has switched from, you know, uh, that focus over to also including the digital shelves, you know, for e-tailers and retail. You know, as you expand the channels that a brand is available at, you know, you really need to focus on that marketing mix to bring your products to life. And the one thing I, I don't think we really talked about, but when you think about, about brand exposure also, it's not all oh, just user-generated content, which a designer can provide. There's user-generated content, and then there's the exposure piece as well as brand positioning. The um, exposure can help us fine tune a specific target audience that you would find, mm -hmm. you know, shopping in a specific retailer. That's going to help our brand. The more we know about your audience and, you know, who we're trying to reach um, and the digital realm helps us to get to those marketing details. You know, what is your engagement? What does your target audience look like within your social channels and what have you? And who are we getting exposed to from that demographic psychographic perspective in order to be able to magnify our brands to that audience? Mm -hmm. Then when you tie in that positioning piece, there could be um, specific opportunities with brands that you can um, help them to really differentiate their product. You know, we started as a brand in hospitality um, and are known for that iconic showering experience. Mm. The experience is really what transcends our entire branch. And, you know, how do you bring that to life in something that's attainable and relatable to someone who's walking into a big box retailer looking for shower heads, for fixtures, and how do you make your brand attainable and relatable? And, you know, that's what they can help us to do. They also become our long-term advocates. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, Maria, that's a very long answer to your question about, you know, how soon is too soon. But it really depends on the journey that you're, you know, about to embark on as, you know, a designer and what have you. We've had some join the challenge and not finish until a year later. That's, you know... The, the anomaly in the situation, but the brand is interested from the Speakman perspective of those long-term partnerships. How do we continue to um, bring those new on-trend, as you mentioned, Maria, spaces to life because mm -hmm. you run out of budget and what have you to continuously bring your own space to life. Um, and so, you know, that's something to always take into consideration. And we're thankful for those advocates and brand partnerships that we've created. Um, we've watched some of our designers really grow tremendously in their journey. Mm -hmm. And that's one beautiful thing. As a brand, we can also help you through social media to continue to get exposure to other brands, you know, and what have you. And our audiences. We work with rep agencies and, you know, all kinds of other um, manufacturers and partners to make things come to life. And so that's one thing that's the beauty of social media, uh, right, Jason? You get to tag people um, and social algorithms. When you're tagged as a brand and someone reacts with it, their audience is then, a portion of their audience is then, serve that same content. So you continue to, I like to use the word magnify, but it's all about magnifying that, you know, brand reach. And it comes from both sides of the fence, from the designer side, as well as the brand side. Yes, that's very true. So basically, it's never too soon to reach out and you don't have to know any thing you don't have to know all the details about the brands and what they're doing and who they're trying to go after but you share what you have to offer and then the brand's job is to figure out how you may fit into their strategy and chances are there's going to be a way so 
Yeah. So yeah. everybody, yeah, let's start reaching out and talking about reaching out, Shannon. Where can mm-hmm. people learn more about PPG Speakman and about you? Oh, absolutely. So I am personally am on LinkedIn. If anyone would like to connect with me, you can find me there. Uh, and that Shannon, S-H-A-N-I-N, which is the only thing that really makes me unique. <laughs> um, and so you can find me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to connect with you and, and help you to network, you know, if you're even just getting your start or what have you in design. Uh, the brand, you can find Speakman at www.speakman.com and the same for Wolverine Brass. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Those are our most active social channels. And we do have brand presence on LinkedIn also, but more from that professional perspective and less from, you know, the design perspective. So we're happy to connect with any of you as well as my uh, entire team as well. So Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, coming on. We appreciate it. Lots of good information. Um, And we'll hear everybody else next week on Designer Discussions. Thank you so much. If you found this episode helpful, share it with a friend and leave us a review or feel free to ask us a question. We'll read our comments at the end of our episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Designer Discussions. What was your takeaway? Care to share your thoughts and tag Jason, Maria, and Miriam on social media? You can find them on all platforms at designerdiscussions.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review or comment for this episode from wherever you are listening.